Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Bethel. Welcome to our morning worship service. As we begin our time of worship together, would you please bow your heads with me as we come to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, so much that we can be here in your presence to worship you. And Father, we, we pray, Lord, that you would open up our understanding and our hearts, that your words would fall on good ground, that it would help us to walk uprightly, to be righteous in your sight. And Father, we ask and we pray that your presence would be with us as we come to worship you. Father, may, may you be with us, may, you, may your presence be with us. For we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> this morning we come together in the presence of God Almighty to give thanks to the Lord, to seek Him in His words and, look, and be inspired in His words to worship Him. And I like what it says in Psalm 104, verse 31. And the psalmist writes these words, May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in His works. Well, let us then sing and glorify our Lord, our Creator, who is immortal and invisible, as we come to praise and worship our God this morning. And let us then exalt God with our opening hymn, which is entitled Immortal Invisible, page 25. Would you join me as we sing to our great God this opening hymn? Thank you for singing this that wonderful hymn. Oh, as most of us have known that the 2017 church camp ended two weeks ago, and it has been a special camp for me. And during this camp, the words from Psalm 119, verse four to verse six came alive to me. And this is why this is an important, uh, a special camp. And it reads, in Psalm 119 verse 4 to verse 6 these words you have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently all that my ways were directed to keep your statutes then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments and God through these words spoke to my heart and he showed me that I have not kept his words in my heart diligently let alone at all and through this camp, God has shown me that my heart must be taught to keep his words in my heart. God has spoken in the past. He has spoken to the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 17, 9, that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And if this is the description of us as our heart. Think of what our heart that has, that has not hidden God's word. And because I have now seen the condition of my heart that is unfocused and how I have strayed from the Lord because I have not taken the time to hide his words in my heart, to let it take root in my heart. And this camp has been such an important reminder to memorize the Lord's words and to keep his words in our hearts. And this is what we must do as his people. You know, this was a personal reflection on this is what I must do. But as his people, this is what we must do too, to keep his words. Because he has commanded us as his people to do this, that it may be well with us. Well, let us then turn to our, our next hymn, entitled, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. And God's words is 
it will guide us through life. That it would help us through our difficulty when we face our uh, challenges in life. And I remember um, when my mum first uh, was teaching me when I was a, a little child. Um, she, every time she used to bring me to her friend's house or my auntie's house, um, she would say, you know, you have to greet people or else um, it's, it's disrespectful. It, it sounds better in, in uh, Cantonese, like, um, it's disrespectful for you. You know, it's, um, you know, like, greet people or else it's tosoi uh, ka. You know, like, it's, it's disrespectful to the family if you don't. And this is what God meant when he said it will be well with us that no other nation would have a God that would teach his people like this. That would guide us through life. So would you stand with me as we, we sing this wonderful hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Please be seated and may there be something we can discover new this morning as the Lord's word may be open to us. Pass it on to Pastor Chris. Good. Thank you, Lino. Well, may he pass it on to one day when he has his own family, he has his own children, teaching children to greet. That is so important. It really is. Don't talk so God. <laughs> Those who are Cantonese speaking, uh, that is. It, it, who says Cantonese is not a beautiful language? Uh, it's actually quite uh, sharp. Okay, well, this is going to be a real challenge for us. And may we take this challenge up to learn the right lessons in life and then pass it to the next generation. That's actually what the scripture teaches. The book of Deuteronomy is like that. Okay, teach. Guess who they teach? The parents. Parents, you, you understand this, you live by it. Okay, now teach your children. Uh, that you see a, a whole community. This is what it means to be people of God. Okay. Now, just a few announcements. Now, in the bulletin, it says there's catechism class. I am so sorry. There is no catechism class uh, uh, today and next week. Today, because I need to meet with uh, those who are involved in the camp. We need to review the whole thing. Okay. So at 1 p.m., I, I apologize. I have to take that time. 12.30, I need to meet with the AVA people. So, I, I just, we just don't have all the time to, to do all those things. Okay? And uh, next week is Mother's Day. And we are going to celebrate and spend a little time together in fellowship, appreciate mothers, and which rightly so. So, no catechism class. Okay? Just please take note of those things there, if that would be wonderful. Right now, we begin a new pulpit series, and it's exciting to look at. This is brand new. Now, what are we going to learn on, on this series? It's just one word: chosen. And the concept of God choosing people to be His people is a special thing from Old Testament to New Testament. The Old Testament is just such a rich book to study. If we dare to read it, it actually is really rich. So at our church, we actually study the Old Testament. Right? As well as the New Testament. Then you're going to have a full Bible, you see. You're going to study just one. You're, going to have a, you're reading half the Bible. And so we take the whole. Now, let's take up this Bible memory verse and then it will give us a starting point. Now, we have a starting point and the starting point is actually found here. Okay, now Deuteronomy 7, 6 is where we are taking this theme from and you see it here. Beautiful. If we can understand this. Okay, well, let's try and read this together. Maybe we've not hided it. Try to hide this in your heart. It's a wonderful text, really. Okay, Deuteronomy 7, 6. Well, let's try this together. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. 
the Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth now how does it make you feel when you read a text like this you check your feelings that's how we engage the scriptures check how you, you know immediate whether you have understood it or not now if you feel scared well oh, god has chosen me i'm stuck you know i'm gone god chosen me i cannot be unchosen i'm scared then you've not understood this text at all you probably misread it you probably you don't know what what this whole doctrine of chosen is so this would be for you now if you look at this and you feel wow what a privilege good do i fully understand it well do you know how long it has taken me to understand this one word chosen then i just beginning to understand it 13 years when i first started out in ministry chosen would you serve the lord full time i understood the concept did i fully understand what chosen is no now, not confident full of fears i could fail do i do, what if i don't succeed so many things did i fully understand it back then 13 years ago i would tell you no maybe in concept just concept in the mind looking at the same text today is quite different can i say with all my heart you know god has chosen me and the answer would be yes and i wish this for all who are here and you can say with great certainty assurance you know what the lord has chosen me and us together as a people now that would be good that's why this series of messages is planned for okay so well, let's take a look at this very very carefully and then uh, we are lots to learn over here okay well let's pray together for a while our father we pray that we will be deeply challenged to begin a new series to be open our hearts and our mind to read your word that it would get through to us that will be in us and that it will yield the fruits that it was meant to that we would understand this glorious thing doctrine of what it means to be your people chosen we pray for your blessings in jesus name amen okay now well, let's turn to deuteronomy chapter 7 and it is wonderful to turn to the scriptures which we encourage all the time this is how you become uh, more familiar with it where we can turn to the scriptures and this is verse 6 this concept this is a concept but are we conscious of this concept three things one here's a concept are we conscious of you are a holy people are we conscious that we are a holy people is holiness something we're actually conscious of are we conscious that the lord has chosen us to be a people for himself conscious are we conscious that we what god says you are special i don't i don't know whether you tell your children they are special i hope so i hope you tell them they are love they are your children they are special so often we tell them all the wrong things you are useless you are good for nothing so and so son is better you know how much damage you have done you have done so much damage to your child that may not ever be repaired you know what god is so different refreshingly different wonderfully different and he says you know what you are a special treasure when all the earth all the people you are special to me 
I don't know how that makes you feel. That makes me feel, wow. You know, what does it mean to be special? Now, let me tell you and share with you a little bit about ramen. I like my ramen. And I, the ramen in Perth, there's one called Now. If you haven't visited, haven't eaten at Now, you should. It's good ramen. And this person handmade, makes his own stuff, takes tremendous pride. You know, the guy stands there. He's the only one that is allowed to touch that machine, I notice. Until I went to Japan, the birthplace of ramen in Fukuoka. They are famous for their tonkatsu ramen, pork broth ramen. And then I was told by actually Eldin's neighbor, uh, he said, you're going there, go to this place called Ichiran. This ramen is the best ramen in the world. Oh, I happened to, I wasn't planning so, so okay, since I am there, I must try. I didn't really think about it that too much. He tells me best in the world, world. You know, you get a pinch of salt there. And so, I didn't even, didn't even not conscious at all. Concept, okay. Conscious, not really. Everybody say they're best in the world. All, all, in Singapore, every Hokkien, you know, all the stuff, we're best in the world, we're best in the world. So after a while, you don't even listen to that stuff. And so when I was there, and then the ladies went shopping, so I don't know what to do with myself. So I thought, hey, I found the store. And so it was very interesting because you get a booth. I'm like, this is so unusual. Is the special thing the booth or what? You press, you don't see anyone. This is so impersonal. What service is this? Already complaining heart coming out. Press thing, go down there, line up. Uh, what's this rave about? I don't even see the person serving. Here's a mat. I don't know what to do. Put that down there, and then what I want, ticket, and then curtain goes up, a bowl of ramen comes out and shuts. I'm all by myself, nobody to talk to. My wife and my daughter shopping. And okay, best in the world, right? Ticket. One sip. Whoa. What's happening? I don't know what hit me. I have never tasted ramen like this. I was... Eat the noodle. <sighs> Tears came. <laughs> you know, you feel drooling, you know. Your mouth is open already. <gasps> the whole... I have never finished an entire bowl every single drop and I came back to Perth and I ate it now what is this <laughs> it has ruined me that is special you know what it is special you know sometimes you really wonder what it means to be special what does God see in me that I, I don't even see this Israel you know why God chose you? Please don't think you were great. They were not. They were the least of all the people. And yet, God, we read here. Take a look at this. The Lord did not set His love on you, nor choose you, because you were more in number. Not because. Than any people, you were the least of all the people. But because the Lord loves you. You see, this is what God is extending. He is extending a very special relationship. Suddenly in Japan, in Fukuoka, I suddenly have a very special relationship. I don't care about anyone else now. No wonder they block off everything. Between, it's only me and ramen now. It's ramen time. <laughs> wow. Of course, it's just ramen. Ramen. But what about God? Of course, it's going to be far more special than that. And it is, if you have tasted it for yourself. Don't just listen to it. Don't just hear this. Can this be yours? Can this really be yours? Hey, God will say, you are, my, you are a people to be. God relationship, special relationship. God people. 
You are my people. Special treasure. Holy. That's wonderful. Why, why would God do this? We call this reason. Is it because you're great? No. Because you are so many. And that special word here is the word love. Because the... You, look at this word here. It is wonderful. It's twice already mentioned. Okay? He did not set his love on you because you were more. You see, love in this world today is when you are somebody. And you're great. You're doing well. There is love. Right? It is all by what you have, what you possess. You're popular. Love. If you're a nobody, will anyone love you? And so we strive to, to so-called be a somebody. That we may gain the love and approval of others. All the time. And God does something very special. He says, He did not set His love nor chose you. Love and cho choosing goes together. It just tells us how God chooses. In what manner. And it's beautiful. He doesn't go any mini miny mo. He doesn't randomly choose us. He chose with purpose, with personal interest there, love. And He pours His love there. You were the least. But because the Lord loves you. Now that's special. This is the word because. Why, God, have you chosen me? So special. I don't deserve this. You know what? Because love. There is love for you. Remember this. This is not when Israel had everything. They did not. They just came out of 40 years in the wilderness. They are starting out in life. This is their starting point. And here is the Lord saying to them, they have not achieved anything nor accomplished anything. I've chosen you because I love you. That's really special. Because if God was to say that when they were a mighty nation, they are great, they got everything going for them, oh, I, I chose you because I love you. It's not the same. It's really not the same. Here's something else to tell you how powerful, how committed, how faithful this love is. He says these words here, over here, right? And he says, because, again, this is the second because, he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers. The Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand, redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Sometimes to understand this love, you've got to see it in a, another person's life. And they know this person. This person would be Abraham. When God loved Abraham, he gave an oath. He is committed to him. He gave him a promise that he will be blessed. And no matter what, he will keep it. Abraham did not live a perfect life. There was his ups and downs. More downs than ups. And so are we. We don't live a perfect life. Many ups and downs. And here is a God who says, Love, and I am going to give. And I will remember that oath. I will keep that oath. That is the depth and richness of God's love. Can we understand this? So we got to see it in. Perhaps... For them, it would be their great-great-grandfather. They see this love and they are to learn this is a God who loves like this. And that's his reason for choosing. Is it not special? Okay, now let us go on further to see this. Okay, the relationship is there. The reasons are given. Now, what should the response be? Take a look at this response over here. Okay. This should be the response in verse 9. Therefore the Lord God that, that therefore, sorry, three response here. One, no, 
that the Lord your God, He is God. The faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations. This is what we are committed here at Bethel. Knowledge. This is why we pick up Bible, we take pen, we bring note, we write. Knowledge. We search the scriptures. Why? Why do I do that? No. I am God's conscious. This is who I am. Right? Now it characterizes me. No longer is this a concept. This is a concept. You are my people. Given way back 40 years to understand this. They become conscious. Moses became very, very conscious what it means to be God's chosen people until it just characterizes you. What characterizes your life? Does knowledge characterize you? What characterizes Bethel? I wanted our, you know, our website. There's one thing that characterizes our website. Knowledge of God. You people, we will go in there. We just want to find knowledge of God. That is the only function. In a, we don't sell anything. It's not like you. you know, they, not that people don't try. By the way, Kurong has offered. If we put their uh, Kurong on our website, we get discount from them. So if you go to Bethel website, there's a link. We get commission. Sorry. Thank you, Kurong. We buy books from you, but we're not going to do that. Why not? Extra income. Thank you very much. That's not what characterizes us. I would insult myself. I would insult the church. I would insult what it means to be God's people. What characterizes you? Ramen? I hope not. I, I just enjoy it. But please don't. Pastor Chris, equate Pastor Chris with ramen. And I will be very, very sad for the rest of the day. Only the rest of the day. What characterizes you? I would like to believe knowledge should characterize me. What characterizes you? Look at this. With, he does this with those who love him. Love for the Lord must characterize us. And keep his commandments. Knowledge, love, keeping God's commandments characterizes. Does it characterize us? There it does. I ask myself this question. Does it characterize me? If it doesn't, then you know what? I am not God's people. And it's just a concept. If it characterizes me, then I have now understood this. I truly am God's people. Chosen people. I can see it now. What characterizes us? This study of God's word is chosen in our way. We, we might as well. There, there are so many out there. What do we want to be as a church? What characterizes us? It's like Deuteronomy 4. Turn to Deuteronomy 4. This is wonderful. Why we are committed to teach the Lord's word? Because Moses was committed to teach the Lord's word. Okay, now take a look at this very carefully. Now, Moses said, verse 1, Deuteronomy 4, Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the judgment that I will teach you to observe. I actually need to teach you to observe. Because if I don't teach you to observe, you don't know what you're looking for. What are you looking for when we read the scriptures? You think, okay, I open the Bible. Which book to begin it's not about big book. Do you know what to look for? At YAG yesterday, I would look at the book of Hebrews. This is what you look for. Share with the young, ad uh, young adults. And YPG yesterday, this is what you want to look for in the gospel. Share with young people. What are you looking for? I've got to teach you to observe. Right. Because you could be looking at the wrong thing. It's very possible. If you look at the wrong thing, guess what you will find? The wrong thing. And so Moses was committed. Listen. Are you listening? 
statutes, judgment, which I teach you to observe that you may live. You know what? You will live and not die. You will succeed and not fail in life. You will make decisions that will give you life, not take. That you will live. That is the point of it all. The scriptures. Now, take a look at this. Which you go into the land to possess. Right? You are starting a new venture now. You're beginning a new life now. Now, how do I go in? What do I do? What? Now, this is, you've got to possess this. Do you know what to do? Do you have the wisdom to do this? Do you have the understanding to do this? Take a look at this very carefully. I will do this. You shall not add and, and take and so and so forth. Now, read verse 5. Surely I have taught you statutes and judgments. I will teach. I have taught. Two things. Right? Moses continues to teach. He has taught. He continues to teach. I will teach. And I have taught you. And if he has taught and you have observed well, what will happen? What will come out? What is the result? Verse 6. Therefore be careful to observe them for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of people who will hear all these statutes and say, you know what people will say of you because this characterizes you? They will say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Does wisdom and understanding characterize us? When people listen to you speak, they say, wow, they, what, where you are wise. You, are, you have understanding. You make decisions that are good. We see this in your family. God is surely blessing you. That characterizes you. This is what it means to be God's people. What characterizes God's people? A wise and understanding people. This is the reason why we are committed to the study of the scriptures. Like this. And all who are committed, you know what you will become? If you are, you will be wise. You will have understanding from God. And you will live a life blessed by God. And this is wonderful to see this. Okay, now turn back to Deuteronomy 7 because what are the results? Remember, these are the results. The relationship, the reason God gave it, given to you. Can you be? Yes, not. What if you have nothing now? You just started out. You've got really nothing. Can, would God want to choose you? The answer, yes. It's all about Him, His love and His commitment. Not about what you have done or what you can give. You could be in sin right now. You could be in bondage. God says, I will deliver you out of that. I will take you as I did for Egypt. I'm sorry, did for Israel out of Egypt. Would you be my people? Now, if you respond, therefore, I'm going to know God. He is God, the faithful God. I'm going to love him. I'm going to keep his commandment. And if you do that, what will come out of it? Read verse 12, chapter 7, verse 12. Then it shall come to pass. See that then it shall come to pass. This is called result. Because you listen to these judgments, keep them, do them, the Lord your God will keep with you the covenant and the mercy he swore to your fathers. He will remember you. He will be very merciful to you when you are going through hard times. And... He will love you, bless you, multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your land, grain, new wine, oil, increase of cattle, offspring, flock, and a lot here in the land which he swore to give to your fathers. Wow, the Lord will bless you. Now I look at this now and I just, I stand in awe of how real, how true this is. The fruit of your womb. I have two fruit. One named Chrissy and one named James. And God has blessed us with two 
children that we thank God for every day. We really thank God. They are a blessing from God. Do you see your children as a blessing from God or a burden to you? Do you see the children that God has given to you as precious, as special? Or just oh, quickly go up so you can make money for me. That's sad. I met someone during the week and I noticed he had a son, daughter, sorry. And I said, wow, there's a, you know, wonderful. He just, we've got to quickly grow up. That's what we think, quickly grow up. You know, just, if we can see, this is such a blessing. This is such a joy. You have the opportunity to be father to them, to raise them up. No privilege. It changes us when we see things from God's perspective. It really does. Look at this, the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your land. Oh, I have a lemon tree that is just fruiting like you know, some of you have been recipients of. Thank you very much. You never say thank you. Some, okay, if you haven't, it's okay. You don't need to say thank you. But there is fruit and it's fruiting. My kale is go growing very well, thank you very much. I don't have a farm, but well, thank you. You know, whatever you touch prospers, is this possible? 13 years of ministry. Now, this is so special to see the Lord's blessings come alive, becomes real, because you have done your part. And He says, Verse 15, and the Lord will take away from you all sickness and will afflict you with none of the terrible diseases of Egypt which you have done, but will lay on them all those who hate you. In other words, this is not about you will never fall sick. Of course not. This is when people, they, people hate you and they curse you. I wish you die. Oh, that is a terrible curse. Don't know why. I curse your business because they competition, you see. Hope your business fail. There will be people who will curse you. You don't need to worry because those curse will not. God will protect you. He will remove the curse. That's what it is. The plagues of Egypt. Wow, this is very important for businessmen. How do you think I pray for my father? Sure, phosphate resources, you tiny little phosphate. Brazil is bigger. Hey, don't worry. God is there. My department, I'm also working for that. My department is called prayer. Sook, Sook, uh, I'm sorry, Sook. Steph is something else. Nick, something else. Mine, prayer. Of course I pray for my father. Lord, would you bless him? Would you protect him? Well, I'm, I'm thankful. Dad will come and, and, and he will say, can I have lunch with you? I, I want to listen to God's word and, and let's talk. And I share with him the wisdom that is not of my own that comes from the Lord's word. How can I share this with everybody and not my own father? Of course, there is time for that. No matter how busy you are. When he calls up, son, are you busy? The answer is no. I'm just waiting for you. Of course not. Because when I call him, no matter how busy he is, he said no. Will I do the same? Of course I will. Relationship. You see, this is what God gives to us. A very special relationship. I am God to you. I have chosen you. These are my reasons. Like love for you. This is the re no, reasonable response. You know why I'm going to love the Lord. I'm going to keep His commandment. I want to know Him. You know what will happen? Of course, the Lord desires very, very much to bless us. Let this word be a word that would encourage us. And there is so many things here. Look at this. Verse 16. Also, you shall destroy all the people whom the Lord your God delivered to you. 
Your eyes will have no pity. You, those who will, you know what these are? These are enemies. The enemies will come. There is physical enemies and there will be spiritual enemies. They will come and you will destroy them. You will conquer them. You need not afraid people who will curse you. You need not afraid enemies, fierce enemies who will come because you have a God who is committed to you. You committed to Him, He's committed to you. Concept? In the past, 13 years ago, it was concept to be. But I believed in this concept with all my heart when Bethel started. When I started here in Bethel, conscious, characterized. How wonderful, how beautiful it is to have this relationship. And you treasure those who love you. You treasure a God who loves you. You know, you don't... You don't feel that, how come you didn't do anything that deserves this love? This week, I could fly to Singapore. I have a friend who has just gone into coma. Her name is Auntie Maureen Sia. Some of you do know her. When Eldin and I got married about 10 years ago, she flew over from Melbourne to be with us in our wedding. I never forgot that. The little figurine on top of our cake was from her. She thought of us. I didn't really know her. Because we're starting out, she loved Bethany, she loved the work of God there. She chose to love us. And every anniversary that Bethel celebrates, she would fly over from Melbourne if she's in Melbourne or from Singapore when she's in Singapore just to be here. When I started out, there was still nothing. You you accomplished nothing, achieved nothing. And yet there was this friend, this person who chose to love you, who chose to support you, who chose to be there for you. When I heard that she suffered a stroke on Wednesday, it was very hard for me. When I was told on Saturday that she's now unconscious, I broke down and cried. Aldine was wondering why. I didn't, she said, I didn't realize you were so close to Auntie Bori. And as she passes on, she will be passing on. She's in Melbourne. They will fly her body back to Singapore because her heart has always been in Bethany. I will fly over. She has flied over so many times for me. The least I can do is to fly over to say goodbye. We value relationships here. I value them. What characterizes me? Knowledge, love, and I will keep this to the last day. Let Bethel be that church. Let us be the people whom God has chosen us to be, a wise and understanding people, a church that would feel, a church that would love God and His Word and keep. Let Bethel be great. Let her be great. And let you be among the chosen. This is my prayer. This is my commitment. I have seen this now. I can understand this now. And I want to share this with you. With all my heart. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you. That you have chosen to love us. If we were nobody, you stood by us, you supported us, you believed in us. And now we see your blessings, your goodness, your mercy, your protection. All these years, may this concept of being chosen become even more ingrained in our heart and our mind. 
and we will be all that you want us to become. The wise and understanding people. A people who will love you. A people who will draw near you. A people who will keep covenant. Your special covenant offered to us. Let this be in our heart and our mind this morning. That this concept would be something of being your people. Would be something we will can't be so conscious of every day of our lives. And it will certainly characterize us. Bless us, we pray, as we prepare our hearts to partake of the Lord's Supper, as we remember that glorious covenant that the Lord Jesus Christ established for us to be your people. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The difficulty I have is I'm due to go to India in the end of the month and I have to uh, sort out my visa. If I get, of course, apply for visa, I may not be able to travel. Uh, apparently my sister knows a, a way to get visa in one day, so I'm, I'm consulting her. Uh, some things I don't know how to do. So I, I want to do this with all my heart. I value people. As much as I, I, I value, of course, God, I value people whom God has given, blessed us with. Closeness is what I value. Not everybody is close to you, and I understand that. Not everybody wants to be close to you. But the people of God was meant to be close. God's people are close. In heart, in spirit, in life. Because... Closeness is what God has given between Him and people. And every time we partake of the Lord's Supper, this is a very special thing that God, I am reminded once again that God has allowed us to be close to Him. How we, may we know God beyond a concept? How do we know the, what, who God is? And that was the Lord Jesus Christ. And He came. And He showed us. This is God. He came to be identified with the weak, with the sinful. Not that He was sinful in any way. Of course not. But He can understand weakness. And so the Son of God became our High Priest. This is why we celebrate communion. Again, we draw close to God. We draw close as we partake of bread. We draw close as we partake of the cup. We are reminded of His blood that cleanses. Let's draw close to God together as we have the bread passed around. Let's sing this beautiful hymn, Close to Thee, 365. This is what God really wants for us. It has always been what He wants for us, to be close to Him. When has God chosen us? When? When you were born? When you became outstanding, when you succeed, Paul puts it in a way that just blows my mind away. Before the foundation of the world, he chose you in love. That is the profundity of this word chosen. How much he thought of you. You knew you know all about me. You know how I would fail you. You know how I would depart from you and you still chose me? Only a God of great love could do that. 
and would do that. The oath is to tell you, I believe in you. Don't focus on the shortfall. Focus on a God who sees you as special. You are a treasure to me. A God who loves you. A God who believes that you can be all. His all that you could become. You can succeed. You can be that mighty nation. You can overcome. Don't be afraid. What do you need? You only need one thing. Close to Him. Draw close to God. Would you draw close to God this morning? In your heart, in your mind? Perhaps there are many things that is hindering you. Many things that is holding you back. What is it? What can be more important than being close to God? What holds you back? God has provided every possible thing to draw close to Him. And all He wants is this. Be close. All I want is this. Draw close. Think about this. Let's partake of this bread together. Our Father in heaven, what a privilege to address you, know you as Father, that you would reach out to us, that you would bring us into your family, which we are so unworthy of, that you would give to us your Son to lead us, to draw us back to yourself again and again. We have fallen so many times and so many times where you should have given up on us, you haven't. You still send forth a word to remind us that we are special to you. Our Father, we thank you for this precious love. May we treasure it with all our heart. We ask that you would Bless us and encourage us with this word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 438 is a beautiful hymn. Cleanse me. That we have heard much about how we need God's cleansing in life. So many things that clutter up our heart and our mind. Sin, the world, problems, worries, you name it. It is so cluttered. God can't even get through to us. I was speaking in Sunday school. How, you know, with all our heart, we want God, God's word. How come we keep on not being able to have God fill our heart and our mind? How come? No matter how hard we pray, we memorize, we forget, we come to Bible study, we do this, but God still does not fill us. How come? It was a special word in Ephesians 4. Not only above you, but through you and in you. Can God get through to us? Can God really come into our hearts? He cannot if it is already filled. If it is filled with just pursuing money, if it is filled with just all kinds of things that takes up every single spot, there is no room for God to even come through to us. 
you know what is needed? I said to the Sunday school student, we need a serious spring clean. You need to call in professionals. And there's one person who can cleanse us completely. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Draw close to him. Let him cleanse us. This is a beautiful song. Let's sing this as we have the cup passed around. God will hear us if we come to him humbly. This is what, what the scripture says in Psalm 25. The Lord will teach the humble. He will guide them. Would we come to the Lord humbly? How must we approach the Lord's table? Come humbly. Let's partake of this cup together. Our Father, we thank you so very much that you have provided for us cleansing the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to cleanse us from all our sins. Your word to cleanse us from all our ways that have been wrong. We thank you for providing cleansing full and free. Lord, cleanse us. Cleanse us from deep within. And fill us. Fill us with your word. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your power. Fill us with yourself. That we may be your people. That will bring honor, glory to your name. Here and beyond our shores. We ask that you would hear this, our prayer, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's prepare to give an offering for the Lord's work this morning. We're going to conclude the worship service with this hymn together. But let's sing of this as our response What a wonderful song that you just want to sing, My Saviour's Love. And I hope this morning, you know, as I read Deuteronomy 7, Deuteronomy chapter 4, I actually read Exodus 19, just didn't have the time to uh, help connect that part of it uh, together. I just stand amazed. I just stand amazed of God and who He is, that He has chosen us to be His people. May we stand amazed for the one who made all this possible for us. And that is none other than the Lord Jesus. I like this hymn. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. And wonder how he could love me. A sinner condemned unclean. I like the chorus. How marvelous, how wonderful. And my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful. And this is the song we're going to sing. Is my Savior's love for me. May we go with this special song, a special declaration in our heart this morning. Let's rise as we sing this together. Let's ask God to bless us as we go from here. Let's pray together. And now may this great God, the God who created the heaven and the earth, The God whose name is above every name. In whom we have the privilege to call Father. Who has chosen us in love before the foundation of the very earth. Who gave to us the Lord Jesus Christ. Who draw us close to himself. May the Spirit of God indwell our hearts. Cleanse us. Enlighten us. To behold this great God inclining our hearts to draw close to Him now and forevermore. Amen.